when we're in the moment, we think that we're right and we think that what we're saying is right because we're in that moment and we have full conscious of how we're presenting and how we're communicating and how we're giving off to other people. However, when you go back and listen to yourself and you go back seeing yourself, that's when you start, oh, I sounded terrible. I look terrible. And I could tell I was very frustrated. And then that's the moment when you, when the light bulb goes off, you're like, realize it like, yeah, I made an ass out of myself right there. Right. And I think that that's the humbling part. So I was just curious if people did that. Are you? But I think that's um, growth too. It has a lot to do with growth. You can go back, you can critique yourself, you know, maybe change your perspective a little bit based on what somebody else said and do better next time or have more knowledge moving forward. I think that's the whole point of the panels, to learn from each other, listen to each other's perspective, and move forward on what you can do better. Yeah. So, so Kelly, did I, uh, what you saying that, did I convince you of letting your male friend go? Oh my God, we are not going back there today. <laughs> <laughs> we are not going back there. But what Bruh. I will say about the whole friend thing is that having friends is a big part of what I do, you know? So it's kind of hard to just cut people off. But what I have learned to do is take that title off of it <laughs> and use other words. Because <laughs> I know the friend word is triggering for some people. So... I've modified my words a little bit. Hey, shout out to your growth. Okay, thank you. I appreciate everybody here for that. Uh, I have a quick question. They reference BPD. Does anyone know what it is? Bipolar disorder. I thought, but I'm like, or disorder. Borderline. Okay, okay. I, I thought it was very commendable and like Louise said it, it it does help for you to to actually have recordings of conversations and for you to go back um and actually be able to view them or listen to them to see if what upset you or triggered you really happened because the issue right and this just happens in growth as a person when you're going through a growing phase you're still going to run into things words phrases people that will trigger you and sometimes you don't know that you're triggered so you're instantly defensive to something and you want to go off and react a certain type of way when really it's not meant or it's not necessary um for the reaction that you're bringing to the table but it's all coming from an emotional stance and i think this kind of goes back to what hink was saying when for women specifically when we have moments where we're trying to get off how we feel about certain things or how certain things made us feel, which from a lot of times can come from our triggers, right? We also have to be willing and able to listen to the person's response to our feelings because they may be trying to understand you or justifying their actions, not saying that your feelings are irrelevant or that the things you went through were irrelevant, but maybe that it wasn't necessary for you to feel that way in that moment because that's not what they meant. But like the man on the video said, that's when you have to separate your emotion from the logic. And I think for a lot of us that are going through healing stages that deal with different traumas, most of us in our community, it's hard for us to do. As Black people, we we wear a lot of our feelings on our sleeve, right? Our heart on our sleeve. So when people say certain things to us, we instantly want to respond a certain way if you're not taught to do something different or if you haven't grown to a place where you can do something different and communicate differently. So these type of forms are extremely helpful, but unfortunately for a lot of our community, for a lot of people, they don't have this type of thing. So it's harder for them to have conversations and to actually um, be able to point out that, oh, that was a trauma for me. It was a trigger instead of that person actually was trying to come for me. Mm. I think that's where maturity comes in, knowing your triggers and not blaming other people for your triggers. 
I went through my toxic relationships. I had a lot of triggers and I had to realize he is not responsible for my emotions. He is not responsible for my triggers. So when I'm triggered, it's important that I communicate why I'm triggered and let him know, wait, until I heal from this, can we avoid this? You know what I'm saying? This is it's not your fault that I feel this way. This came from a past, but let's, I need, I need in order for me to like, when we used to have our arguments, we both can't help getting loud, but can we avoid curse words or calling each other out at each other name? Can we just start there? And I think that's very, like very, very important. So yeah, I just want to say that. I would chime in to say that um, if you're a person that's triggered, and you recognize certain patterns in your communication with others, then maybe you should be alone. Um, maybe you shouldn't be in a relationship. We have to step, sometimes take a step back and discern to determine that, you know, it's great to be in love. It's great to have a companion, but maybe we're not ready for that because we have so many internal struggles that we haven't overcome yet. Be realistic with yourself. You don't have to be with someone. Sit alone. And a lot of us are afraid to sit alone um, within ourselves and learn ourselves so that we can deal with that emotional baggage, so that we can grow and heal from past trauma so we're not triggered and we don't bring that bearing into someone else and lash out on our, our partner who maybe only wants to help or can actually provide that guidance. Now we're missing out on good people because we're cussing them out, because we arguing, because we, you know, of our response is to them. You know, we just don't know how to deal with people. So you need to sit with yourself. There's therapy. You know, I, I just think that some people need to step back if they find themselves in a constantly combative nature. If you have a mental disorder, you need to deal with your disorder and realize what it is and how it's impactful. Study up on it. Read up on it. Become aware of what's, you know, out there, not only in yourself. Read up on psycho psychology. You know, it's it's a whole profession and, 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 and what do you call it? Line of learning that we all should have some type of knowledge of as we interact with people just in general to, to learn how to communicate. So, you know, fall back from a relationship if you find yourself, you know, always in a situation where you're triggered. I want to highlight something that she brought up real quick. Some people need to learn how to be alone, but unfortunately a lot of people can't be alone, right? It's like the worst, the what what's the worst kind of treatment any prisoner could have? I, isolation. Right. You know what I'm saying, right? It's it's the worst thing. Like their mind and body starts to kind of break down, and people can't be away from certain people for a long period of time. Like it's like you need those pockets of moment of being alone, but then also be around like human interaction. And there's a balance that a lot of people just haven't figured out. Are you? Yeah. 